what I'm going to represent is an earthquake. So I'm standing on the surface of the earth, and in class we talked about the whole idea that there's this idea of the fault. So we can assume that the fault is relatively shallow compared to the length of the earth. And so even though I'm not going to have the fault starting down here, my, the earthquake is going to start on the surface of the earth and it's going to travel through the substance. Okay, so here's how this works. So P waves, who can remind me what, what, what's important about P waves? What did we just learn? Two things. They're fast. They're fast. And number two? They go through solids and liquids. They go through solids and liquids. So this, and P waves, they, and the other thing that, they, that we're going to add to those notes are, that we took in class is that they bump into the thing next to them. So this is how it travels. So here's a P wave. I'm going to simulate an earthquake by pushing the ground. And this is how a P wave travels. It bumps into the thing next to it. Watch it one more time. Just look at the rings of the slinky. What happens to the rings of the slinky as I have the earthquake? And you're about to raise your hand. Bingo. They get closer together. Everybody see that? Okay, watch this. One more time. Watch how the rings get closer together. Okay, so this so they get they bunch and then that bunch, that bunch of coils just kind of moves, that bunching kind of moves all the way down. And if it hits something else, it bounces back. Now S waves are a little different. They move in a side-to-side -side motion. So to model how an S wave travels with the slinky, what I'm actually gonna do is just take the earthquake and it's gonna model a side-to-side -side motion. Now watch how the slinky moves. And here it is. Okay, so you guys see how it kind of moves side to side? So it's very different. Now if there's a bit more energy to it, it'll bounce back as well. Okay, okay. So, do you think this slinky is modeling solids, liquids, or both? Dylan, what do you think? Solids, liquids, both? Take solids. Okay, good, it's solid. So this is measuring solids, okay? So, because S waves don't travel through liquids, right? So all models work to a certain extent. At some point, the model doesn't work exactly like it's supposed to. And that happens with every model, okay? And this is no different. So here we have a model of size and waves of how they travel through the material using a slinky. Slinky is very commonly used, but it has some limitations to it. So P waves are the fastest, right? We learned that in class. So let's, I want you to kind of compare the speed between a P wave and an S wave, all right? So here's my P wave. Just watch how fast it moves through the material. Do it one more time. All right, so there's our P wave. Now, S wave, side to side, watch how fast it goes. Okay, so, which one went back and forth way more times? Yeah. S waves, right? Now, S waves are supposed to happen slower. Do you see a distinctive difference in speed between P waves and S waves? Yeah. Which one do you think happens faster? P waves. Ah, how many people think P waves happen faster? According to this link, how many people think S waves travel faster? Okay. We know on the Earth that P waves travel faster. So I want you to think about this. Why? Why does the model with the slinky not quite show that? And I just want you to think about one word, friction. What is it about the friction of the slinky that makes it not work the way it's supposed to? Go ahead and talk really quick to the person next to you. Okay. Anyone willing to, to give me what you got? Quentin? So when it's going that way, it's got more friction because these are flat and not facing that, that way. Okay. But when it's going this way, it's like uh, flat and but it's easier to go back. All right, very good. So if you were to look at the coil of the slinky, it has to do with how the slinky is shaped. So here we have this really thin edge and the thin edge moving back and forth like this, there's not a lot of friction. It's this little tiny thin edge moving back and forth. But if you take that thin edge and try to push it against the floor in the opposite direction, there's way more friction in that. And so even though the P wave, if we were to measure the P waves traveling through the earth, they go way faster than S waves. But because of the friction of the slinky with the floor, 
It actually does not appear that way. Questions on that?